Well, in the never-ending search to find someplace new and interesting to visit, uh, I decided to let my stomach lead the way. So uh, today we're on location in Nottingham, Pennsylvania. And you're saying to yourself, well, if you're hungry, why are you in Nottingham, Pennsylvania? Well, it's because you're on location and look where we are at the Hers Potato Chip Factory in Nottingham, Pennsylvania. I'm Ken Kidrowski, and as I said, you are on location. Well, you already know where we are today. We're at Hur's Potato Chips in Nottingham, Pennsylvania. And uh, Ed Hur, thank you. I can. Thank you, You're sir. Welcome, sir. You know, it's it's yeah. always a pleasure to drive up here. I'm the last time we met, it was uh, for the uh, the Connective Festival, and yep, I know that yep. that was a big success for yep. people in Oxford and Nottingham. And now it's a pleasure to to talk to you today, not about the Connective, but talking about one of my favorite things in life the wonderful potato chip, oh, especially hers. So yeah. uh, when did it all start for your family? It, it's been going on for a while, hasn't it? Thank, thanks for asking. And Ken, let me say, let me say first of all, that um, I've really enjoyed getting to know you. You're, you're a good guy. I enjoy watching your shows and I appreciate that you're taking time to have another conversation and uh, God, God bless you and all you do. Thank you. Uh, our company started uh, back in 1946. It was, uh, it was, uh, next year we'll be celebrating our 75th year in business. And it all happened when my dad, who was working on his parents' farm, uh -huh. uh, in, in those days you had to work on the farm until you were 21 years old, without pay, by the way. That was your kind of contribution to the, to the family. And at age 21, he saw an ad in the Lancaster paper. And it was an ad that says, Verna's Potato Chip Company for sale, $1,750. <laughs> yeah. So he decided, you know what? I think I'm going to get in the potato chip business. He borrowed the money, $1,700, from his fiance, who later turned out to be his wife and my mother, borrowed the money from his fiance's boss, who was a lawyer in Lancaster. Wow. Right? So he, he, he had... He had a pretty strong obligation to pay that back. I think so. So he borrowed this money, bought the potato chip company from Verna. He said the first mistake he ever made was that he paid Verna up front before she showed him how to make the chips. So she she took the money and took off, and he was left with a couple black kettles that you cook chips in by hand, a 1937 Dodge panel truck that he delivered uh, the chip sales in. And he started making chips by hand in, in the basement of this house in downtown Lancaster. And then after he made, you know, a tin of chips, he, he would put them in, in these tin can, and then he and mother would sell them on their dates, door to door in downtown Wait a minute. Lancaster. Your dad sold the potato chips when he would go out on a date. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he would, so he, yeah. What a guy. He, it's true, he would pick, he would pick my mom up and, and they would go door to door and sell chips. And, and then on, I think it was Saturdays and maybe another day of the week, they would go to the uh, Lancaster market and sell chips at, at the market uh, there. But that's, that's how the whole thing started. And back then, I think dad was, I think dad was maybe uh, selling, you know, 30, 40, 50 pounds, maybe a hundred pounds of chips a week, something like that. Now today, today yeah. if you fast forward and yeah. we'll, we'll well, if, if you want, we can talk about how we make these chips. But just to fast forward, 74 years ago, just a few pounds a day. Yeah. Today, uh, in, when we go over in the factory, you'll see that, that we, make, we make between five and six tons of potato chips every hour. Five and six tons. Between five and six tons every hour. So it's a lot of potato chips. I used to run these, I used to run these fryers, and I used to think, who's eating all these chips? And of course, we're just one small company compared to all the big companies out there that we're competing against. Wow. But that's how it all started. Tell me, when your workers go home at night, 
how, how many showers do they have to take before they stop smelling like a potato chip? I'll tell you what, actually, <laughs> um, probably, probably just one, but, but <laughs> potato chips do smell pretty good. Oh, when, absolutely. When, when, I mean, when, they, when they come over and, and uh, talk to me in the office, I, I can smell that they've been working around the, you know, the, the steam and the, and the potato flavor and all that, but uh, it's not a bad smell. I already told Armstrong I'm foregoing my pay today because you promised hot potato chips. And I, I figured the hot potato chips will be my pay. Oh, the hot that. potato chips off the yeah, line. Yeah, it'd be, that, it'd be like dying boxes. and going to heaven. Yeah, yeah. Good compensation. So you said 75 years ago your dad started this outfit? Yeah, just about. Seven, 74 this year. Yep. And it started in, uh, yep. Yep. in the Lancaster Central Market still going strong. Yep. So, yep. wow. Yep. So that, that's how it all started. And then... Uh, Fast forward to the day, instead of having one or two employees, instead of it just being mother and dad, today we have 1,500 employees, which 1500. is still a fairly small company, but um, we, we love our, our, our family of employees. Obviously, we're a family business, a privately held business, and, uh, and so uh, we have evolved into a company that um, now does just about, just about 300 million in sales of potato chips. And our major market is is right in Philadelphia, so uh, that's that's kind of uh, where we sell the most chips. And then around Philadelphia, the the ten states we call it the Mid Atlantic area, mm -hmm. ten states around Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, is where we where we sell about sixty four percent of our business about of our potato chips. So that that happens in what we call that Mid Atlantic area, and and that's what we call our DSD direct store delivery market. So that's that's a big part of our business. And then we also sell our chips uh, nationwide to certain accounts. Like we might we might make a chip for for Trader Joe's, or we might make a chip for uh, some some uh, uh, supermarket down south, or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So so that's another uh, portion of our business. And then the other thing that's been growing is our international business. So even though it's a small piece of our business, it's growing faster than the rest of the business. And that's where people are buying our potato chips in other countries. And they love buying our chips, even though they can get uh, uh, Frito-Lay chips and other chips there. They love our chips because they're, they're made in America and they're made by an American family. And to another country, that means quality and it, and it tugs at their heartstrings. So, so that business is growing. But anyway, we uh, we start we start making chips with fresh potatoes, and and the number one most commonly asked question is where do you get your potatoes? Okay, where do where do you get your potatoes? Where do you get your potatoes? Thank you for asking. <laughs> and and uh, so potatoes are uh, potatoes are a ninety day crop. Okay, ninety so days. Right. It takes ninety days to grow a potato. So in in uh, in South Florida, they plant potatoes in January. It's warm enough that they can plant potatoes in January. And then by April 1st, the potatoes are ready to be harvested. So what we do is that starts our potato year in April. We buy potatoes right out of the field in Florida and ship them up here. So within a couple of days, we're using the potatoes that were just pulled out of the field, right? We bring the potatoes up here and then we manufacture. And I'll get back to that in a minute, but then from a potato standpoint, we follow that harvest all the way up the East Coast. So we go from South Florida to North Florida. We skip over Georgia, go to North Carolina, Virginia, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York. And New York, Michigan, and Canada is where we get the potatoes in the fall. And in the fall, the potatoes are grown in such rich soil that you can actually store those potatoes for the whole winter. So they put potatoes in storage. It's almost, they're like 52 degrees in a certain humidity. It's almost like they're still underground. You're talking about the muck land around Batavia. Right, right, right. So Batavia, they, New York. So they store these potatoes. And so we're continually using fresh potatoes uh, all year round. And so that lasts us, those, those potatoes that are in storage last us until we get back to the Florida. Well, then your, your customers are not, they're getting a great product, not only because of the way you process them, but because they're really, really fresh potatoes. They're fresh. They're yeah. not laying around. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, potato chips have a shelf life about 10 to 12 weeks. So we make chips with fresh potatoes on one day and within three or four days, they're shipped out to our distribution center. And a couple days after that, they're in the store. So 
Theoretically, you could have a you could have a bag of chips where a potato from that chip was in the field just two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. That's so nice. That's how fresh they are. I never thought of that. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's very cool. And and a potato chip operation, which which you guys will see a little later here, is is very simple. We just we just take fresh potatoes and we wash them. Yeah. And we peel them. Right? Yeah. We run the potatoes through a peeler, which is basically a big tumbler that has all these sandpaper rollers going mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. opposite way, yeah. and it knocks all the peeling off, which which we save. I'll tell you about that later. But then after we peel them, we shoot them upstairs through a water flume, and they come out upstairs, and they fall into these slicer blades, which slice the fresh potatoes right into cold water. All right? The cold water, then, then the wet slices go right up the conveyor belt into the fryer, and and when the cold, wet slices hit the frying oil, it makes steam mm -hmm. because the oil's so hot. The oil's like 360 degrees. Right. So that makes steam, and that bed of steam carries over those chips the whole time they're cooking and seals in the flavor. And then when they come up out of the oil, about two minutes later, we put fresh salt on it, and that's all there is to it. What kind of oil? Well, it's, it's vegetable oil. Okay. So it's either cottonseed or corn, uh -huh. uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no cholesterol in. There's obviously a little fat because we're frying them. Well, sure. But actually, you have to have, you have to consume fat to burn fat. So I always say, eat a couple of chips every day. Or actually, eat a bag of chips every day. What but kind? Then, what kind of salt? I mean, is there a special type of salt? No, it's use? just the same kind of salt you buy at home. Okay. I mean, it might be a slightly different. I mean, it's not cut. sea salt or anything. Uh, like sometimes we use sea salt on certain products, yeah. like on our kettle chips. We put sea salt on. Yeah. I know if I went back to the rack of potato chips behind us, uh, I know you've got some low salt uh, chips. Yeah, low salt. And yep. you know, and, uh, yep. and my cardiologist says to Ken, Ken, lower the salt. Yeah. And so th yeah. th those are those yeah. are really good for me. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of things yeah. like that people do. Yeah. We get a lot of notes from people who say they love they love taking the taking the pretzels because uh, if they want a little less salt, they can just uh, wipe some of the salt sure, off you can. and the pretzel still tastes good with just a little bit of salt on it. But yeah, that's great. So that's how chips are made. And then, you know, you'll see how they put them in, in, in packing in, in the bags and in the boxes, and then they just go out, out to our customers. What's the biggest bag? What's the biggest bag? The biggest bag right now is an 18 ounce bag. 18 ounce chips. bag. Yeah. Do you still yeah. do the tins? No, we don't do tins anymore. Okay, all right, yeah. I just wonder. We talked okay. about doing like a retro or something all right, like yeah, that. Yeah, well, yeah. We don't, we don't do that. Yeah. When's the next so, big anniversary coming up? Maybe maybe well, for the big anniversary you could have a Yeah, a we, tin we of might want to, we might, you would ask, do we want to do tins? We might want to do a tin when we come up with the 75th, come up on the 75th there anniversary. There you go. Mark, there you go. That's, that's just right around the corner, and that might be some kind of a fun thing to do. Yeah, it would. Yeah. I think. And yeah. People, some collectors yeah. will go nuts for yeah. a yeah. for a, a yeah. retro tin of yeah. uh, of hers potato That's chips. True. That's my new marketing guy. Well, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, Armstrong. This guy's gonna grab me any second now. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about when people come down? I, I know that even as we're speaking now, there's one or two school buses pulled up uh, across the way, and uh, the kids are having a lot of fun yeah. in the store and going yeah. on the tour and everything. So what's the deal over there? Uh, so we have a, we have a factory tour, um, and uh, the, we have kind of a unique situation because our tour takes people right out through the plant. It's not, a, it's not a virtual tour, it's a real tour. So we have tour guides, and they personalize a tour and tell about the history of our company how chips are made, how other snacks are made too, by the way, but how chips are made. And then the, the, the fun part of the tour, the best part of the tour, uh, uh, which you're gonna love, is when you get to taste hot chips right off the line. I'm telling you, a hot potato chip, a warm potato chip right off the line is one of the best things you'll ever taste. It's, it's just beautiful. You're gonna make these people at home too I hungry know, and know, you know, they're I gonna... Know. They're, they're gonna they're gonna want yeah. well if, well for, to to your credit they're gonna go run out to the supermarket and, and well, get your chips and well I hope I hope what they do is come in and take a tour yeah you know and 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 see how chips are made and and taste some hot chips themselves 
it's a it's a great it's a great experience. Uh, yeah, well, I'll th tell th the people I'll tell the people at home. I mean, uh, what yeah. you've got going here is like a, a a little little Disneyland or something. Yeah, because yeah. it's 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 so much fun. Yeah. I mean, I haven't gone on the tour, but I've been over at the, at, at the store and. Uh, and, and the displays over there, and, and that's a lot of fun in and yeah. of itself. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the hot uh, uh, hot potato chips. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, Good stuff. Um, uh, quite a complex out here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your farm that's, okay. uh, that's nearby? That's a good question. The, uh, the farm started year, years ago. Uh, we discovered that we have access to and use of an underground aquifer. And this underground aquifer provides all the water that we need to wash and peel and process our potato. So uh, just by the way, we use 150,000 gallons every day of this water. Yeah. So this water is a gift from God. Uh, you know, we see that as a gift. This, this water is a gift from God. And, and so we say, hey, you know, after we use this water, let's spray it back on the fields and let it go back into that, get cleaned up and go back into that underground aquifer. So we're replenishing. So it's a very ecological thing we do. And then what we do is the it happens that the water that we use to wash the potatoes Mm -hmm. becomes high in nitrogen because potatoes have nitrogen okay. from growing in the soil and all that. So the water is high in nitrogen, so it's nutrient-rich water that we're spraying on the fields. And that grows a really good, they call it reeds canary grass. It grows a really good grass. And so what we do is we harvest that grass and we've, uh, it's called the Her Angus Farm. We've uh, we purchase cattle and then we feed this grass and also some corn that we buy to the cattle. Now, the other important part of their food ration is all the floor sweepings from the factory. So all the broken pretzels and potato chips and popcorn, we call it a steer party mix. Yeah. So, so all this stuff uh, that comes out of the factory goes down there and it gets mixed with the grass and the and the and the and the corn all that and and so these steers have such a great um, combination of feed yeah that that they really have become some of the best uh, beef cattle in the industry like we, we really get high ratings for our beef where do you get this beef where can you well, buy it well you can you can buy it at the farm uh, you can you can call the Her Angus farm and say I want to I want to buy this beef. Like you have uh, a little store there? We have, we have, a, we don't have a store right there, but what they do is they, 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 uh, if somebody says, I want to buy a quarter of beef or something like that, we ship the beef to the butcher shop and then the customer can just go right to the butcher shop and purchase it. Wow. Or we can send it to them. Yeah. That should be delicious, it's delicious very, beef. Some of the, never some mind of the, that Kobe stuff yeah. in Japan. Yeah. You got it here. Some, some of the restaurants buy, buy our beef too. Any local restaurants? Yeah, well, the uh, the kitchen that we own uses uses our beef, and there's uh -huh. a, there's a restaurant in town called the Sawmill. I think they use our beef, and then there's a couple in Philadelphia. I'm blanking on the name. Oh, well, uh, yeah, they, they use our beef too. Amazing. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I never knew we would end up talking about uh, beef uh, yeah. at the potato chip uh, place, but yeah. uh, hey, yeah. there you go. Never know what you're going to get. I know. Yeah. Okay, well, 75 years in business. And uh, I'm not trying to age you, sir, but uh, you know, uh, I, I'm certain that uh, some discussion has been made as to what's next around the corner, who's going to take over eventually. So, what does that look like to you? So, so mother and dad started the company, and then I have two brothers and two sisters. So there's five of us in the second generation, and we serve on the board of directors. We also serve as the as the trustees of the company. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we select board members. We, we my brothers and sisters um, establish, you know, shareholder expectations, those mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. things. So, so that's that group. And then uh, the second generation has 20 grandchildren. And of course, a Is lot of them all? are married and have children, yeah. that sort of thing. So our whole family, we have, I think about 81 people now, if you count, if you count mother and dad. 
So, uh, what's happening in our company? Thank God and thank uh, goodness for good values and good relationships. Uh, we are now in the process of, of transferring our company leadership to the third generation. And so uh, we have a very, very successful transition going on where uh, I have three nephews who are already in key leadership positions and uh, a couple more people that have interest in moving up as well. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have a very successful transition going on uh, into the next generation. And um, the, 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 the really great news is that um, uh, we're able to accomplish that uh, and it, it creates sustainability for our company. It creates um, a good feeling for all of our employees to know that the family business is going to continue. Uh, our trustees, for instance, we have no intention of selling the company. We want to continue. To and that's very, very unusual today because only about, only about 5 to 10% of companies survive into the third generation. Yes. Most, most companies don't make it that far. So we feel very, very privileged uh, to have this opportunity to transfer the leadership. So uh, next year, I'm going to name uh, one of my nephews uh, as president and two other of my nephews are already senior vice presidents. So um, it's a really good transition that's going on. We're very happy about it. Well, then that's good news for your family. It's good news also for the community because yeah. uh, I think that everybody in Oxford and Nottingham are happy that you're here yeah. and they want to see you stay here yeah. as long as uh, yeah. as long as possible. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I've seen a lot of things around the, the corporate headquarters about uh, uh, about uh, the culture mm -hmm. of, of your company. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, in the little bit of time we have left, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that, please? Yeah, I will uh, talk about our culture. And you mentioned there uh, uh, about, you know, the, the privilege we have of giving back to the community and that sort of thing. And I'll just say that part of our culture is that we, we just love people and we mm -hmm. love to help people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, we want to share as much as we can, give back as much as we can to the community around us. And we love this area. We think there's a as you've experienced, Ken, there's a real spirit of volunteerism and giving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that sort of thing. So that's part of our culture. But our, our culture was really based on the fact that uh, we, we grew up in uh, with a Christian heritage. And so we have values that are uh, uh, aligned with that. So it's just, it's just values like uh, going the extra mile or uh, the golden rule, those kind of things. It has a lot to do with uh, respecting and honoring people. It has a lot to do with humility, which the best definition I've heard of that lately is uh, to place genuine value on the opinions of others. You know, don't, don't think too highly of yourself, but consider others as equal or better than yourself. And, and so uh, this whole idea of servanthood leadership and that sort of thing is what our company is built on and, and what we're the most proud of. It's actually, actually my job to keep working on that, to, 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 to uh, help our company to continue to pass that on to the next generation, which I'm happy to say is, is so well received. Mm -hmm. They'll probably be better at it than I am even. <laughs> but uh, it's a beautiful thing that, uh, you know, there's something that's going on in the business environment today that has to do with uh, uh, trust and it comes, trust comes to us by transparency and, 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 and as, as, as leaders of the company, we're willing to be vulnerable. We're willing to say, hey, we're not perfect. We make mistakes, but help us. Help us be better. And we take a real humble approach to how we can be the best we can be because we know we have to be our best in order to compete with the giants that we're competing against. So that's kind of that's kind of where we come from. Well, you guys are doing a, a, a wonderful, wonderful job. And Ed Her, I'm glad you had the opportunity, oh or I had the opportunity to, uh, to be with you here, to yeah. talk about this, to review yeah. the, the history about how your dad started out with a couple pounds a day and mm -hmm. now you do a couple pounds in a, a part, part of a second. It's just, yeah. just so amazing. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, what can I tell you other than I'm gonna try to eat some of uh, Ed's profits up here uh, in a little bit, but uh, you stay tuned. We're gonna wrap everything up in just a minute here on location. Thank you.
Tony, let's see if you remember what we talked about today on the show. We were out at the HERS Corporate Center, HERS Potato Chip Factory in Nottingham, Pennsylvania. Hey, the family history, how potato chips are made, all those potato chip specialized potatoes that come everywhere from Florida all the way up to New York State around Batavia, New York. What a story and how the family is going to stay here in the area and the factory will continue to grow and it's privately held and all that stuff. Wow, what a story. And it's a great place out here. You should go on the tour. So I really appreciate the time you've spent with me here today. My name's Ken Kedrowski and you know, you've been on location and uh, I thank you for, uh, what, what? Oh, oh, chipper, chipper. Oh, you got it. Oh, let's see, you got the, Lightly salted and, uh, oh, Christmas. Hey, now Mr. Herr didn't see you take any of this stuff, did he? Okay, great. I'm going to put it in my car. I got to sneak out of here. Okay, thanks. Okay. <laughs> what could be better? <laughs>